Hi, I'm Max Walker-Williams, and today we are at Texan Gun Experience. These are the leaders in the area in firing guns, selling guns, modifications. So we're gonna go inside and learn a little bit more about guns here in the USA, and maybe even get a fire a couple, y'all. So I'm now inside with Brian. Oh, Brian, what an amazing, before we even enter the building, the car park is absolutely immaculate. Is that because you knew I was coming or is that just yeah, yes. the way no, you run your, your I mean, your everything. Shop? So, uh, you know, we have a real attention to detail here and it's not very difficult to just make sure things are, you know, in order and look good. It makes a big difference for the customers, the morale of the staff here. It's just, it feels different. Especially with, with COVID and things now, like cleanliness and stuff is so important for the yes. customer, isn't it? Um, it's amazing. So give us a quick sure, tour yeah, of the yeah. shop if you wouldn't mind. So yeah, a big 35,000 square foot facility. Uh, we have really everything uh, that, you know, the shooters really need. So whether it's, you know, cleaning materials, uh, you know, eye and ear protection. We even have some of those non-lethal eye options like pepper spray, tasers, things like that. Okay. One of the things I really enjoy uh, as a firearm enthusiast myself is we cater to kind of all price points. So if it's, you know, very low budget all the way to the high end, so we have firearms starting, you know, around 200 US dollars, all the way up to, you know, $10,000 uh, dollars and more. Wow. And people pay that for guns, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Oh, so wow. one of the things we noticed too is, you know, if you have some of those guns that you can only find online or in a magazine, yeah. you know, kind of those unicorn guns, yes. uh, if we have it for people to physically see and touch, yes. you know, they're really inclined to, you know, to them to purchase. purchase. Yes. And, and is that is that to, to then go in and fire it or is it an investment or is it both? Both. So okay. I, I equate it to like a really nice uh, sports car, you know, where, uh, yeah. some people really like to drive them, others like to collect them. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. So they, uh, they carry that price tag because of performance, usually build quality, Okay. but also um, kind of obscurity, so. Uh, okay, and I guess like all other industries, you have different brands as well, and some Correct. brands are premier, and some are at entry level. Absolutely, yes, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And uh, with firearms, there's a, a lot of uh, brands and manufacturers. Yeah. A lot of them kind of make the same things as well. Okay. Uh, so it can get very convoluted, but uh, yes. And everyone has a different opinion about Correct. what's the best. Yes. But there are brands that carry a higher uh, right. just, you know, price tag and name as well. Of course, yes. Yeah. So like anything else, watches, cars, golf. Correct. Okay, yes. okay, brilliant. So, so we've just walked through the shop here, and we've got stuff all around yeah. us. Just talk us a little bit about what, what we're looking at. So, yeah, so I mean, it's, uh, it's it can be very overwhelming. Yeah. Um, but we uh, we like to really have everything. So, you know, for uh, us, uh, handguns are very popular uh, for self-defense, for sporting use, uh, target shooting, things like that. Okay. And of course, in, uh, in the United States, uh, ARs, like on this wall here, are kind of the, you know, the, the American weapon. Yeah, so uh, AR-15s yeah. are very popular. Uh, but then we have optics as well. So red dots, you know, magnified optics. Uh, suppressors, uh, suppressors are illegal in the states, uh, so we do offer and sell quite a bit of those. Uh, one big thing uh, that we have here uh, that's very popular is night vision and thermal uh, imaging. Uh, and then of course we do have sporting shotguns and precision rifles as well. So we really kind of cover it all. And, and why, why the thermal and the, and the night vision? You yeah. say they're very popular, what, what are people using them Mostly for? Mostly for hunting applications. So, okay. uh, you know, uh, in, in Texas, uh, uh, wild hogs, pigs are, are, you know, a popular game here. So, yeah. and that's all done, you know, nocturnal. So. Uh, that's primarily the reason why thermal and, and night vision is so popular. Well, that makes sense, yeah. There's this misperception, I think, uh, among people, that in a, particularly in the UK where people sort of hear tidbits and not real information. So let's hear it from the horse's mouth. If I walked in here today as a, as a non-US citizen, I can't just buy a gun. And, no. and, and even if I was a US citizen, you can't just walk in and say, I want six of them and that shotgun and this, that and the other and walk out. Is that correct? No, not quite. Uh, so uh, while, you know, obtaining a firearm as a uh, US citizen, is fairly simplistic. Uh, there is still quite a bit of background checks and steps involved with that. We just have it streamlined. Uh, if you are not a U.S. citizen, um, just off the bat, no, it's it's uh, yeah, yeah it's we can't sell to you. There are things that if you know you're a permanent uh, resident, um, a dual passport. Yes, or, there's different things like that yeah, that we sure. can do. Yeah, um, but we do see a lot of um, you know travelers that come in. You can rent firearms. You can you know test fire and use our range things like that. Just ownership's a little different. Yeah. As far as uh, citizens uh, coming in buying a gun, it's uh, the quickest part of that process is uh, the transaction itself. 
the uh, hurdle that you have to go through is a background check. So we do, with everybody that comes in here, they do have to physically fill out a background check, which goes to our FBI to check. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there are steps in place to just make sure that not anybody and everybody, just, you know, come in and get yeah. firearms. So those have to be legally permitted to. to, to and once you've done those checks, and I, 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 just, I assume that those checks are pretty thorough. Uh, yeah. And they go to the FBI or, or equivalent yes. of, yeah. And once you've done those checks, do you then get a membership or a card or something that says you're a fit and proper person um, so and it makes it easier? There's a couple answers there. So you do not need a permit to right. purchase a firearm here. Okay. Uh, at least in, you know, every state's a little different. Of course. Right, but uh, uh, at least in Texas, you do not need a permit. Uh, you can obtain a permit though that will alleviate some of those background checks in the future. Yeah. So for Texas, we have what's called uh, license to carry. So you do a very thorough training a proficiency exam, and then you send paperwork off to get approved by the FBI in the, in the state here. And then once you have that certificate, then you can come in uh, and kind of expedite that process a little bit. So you don't have to do the background check every time, but you do not need a permit to come in and buy one just okay. on the street. And you just mentioned there you have to go through quite an extensive training program. Is that in a is that in a government uh, uh, sort of facility or is that could somebody come yeah, here and do it's, it? It's facilitated through us, so we have mm -hmm. trainers that are. Oh, fantastic! So you're accredited, and correct. then people can come yes. here because it's such a nice environment. Correct. What a nice place to, to sort of earn your wings yeah. rather than going to sort of some sort of government correct. program yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, with us, anything government handled is very slow in NT. Of course. So like, uh, obtaining a driver's license is a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, our trainers are certified through you know whatever the state curriculum is. Each state yeah. again is different. Uh, but yes, it's a, you know, a curriculum in a classroom where you sit down and we cover, you know, basic safeties, uh, laws, things like that. Everything you really need to, to watch out for. Yeah. And then we have you do the kind of the accredited, uh, the proficiency exam. So brilliant. And then we offer classes outside of that. So we don't want them to just stop at, you know, getting that permit. You know, we want you to, you know, grow and, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, the yeah. more knowledge you have. The it's better. a lifestyle that Correct. you then, yeah. yeah, okay. Well, you know, with, uh, you know, knowledge is an understanding, breeds safety and confidence, uh, and then you can really enjoy it. But, you know, safety is obviously that, that paramount. And it's understanding, I guess, it's also mentality, isn't it? And understanding right. that the, that the how, how dangerous the gun is in the wrong hands. But That's education right. does away with all that. If you're educated, yeah. You, you, there's nothing to fear. That's right. I mean, for us, it's no no such thing as an accident. It's uh, negligence. So we want to okay. make sure that uh, you know we can again, you know, instill that confidence in you by being educated, yeah. understanding, and being safe. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So yeah, show sure. us show us some of the yeah. So the one cool big draw to Texas gun experience is uh, another thing that you know civilians just can't come in and and purchase. Yeah. Is a machine gun. Okay. So uh, we offer around 200 machine guns available to rent. And we actually have a display wall here. It's kind of an interactive menu, which we can walk towards here. Okay. <clears throat> full, auto, full auto Friday. Yes, full auto. So every Friday we do kind of the theme full auto Friday. So what it is, it's four different guns that uh, you know, are discounted rentals. But you can come in any day of the week and we have machine gun packages available. So theme packages. So, so these are people to come in and try out. Correct. Not, not yeah, to yeah. buy. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, yeah okay. you, you cannot purchase these. Okay. Uh, so you can only rent them from us. And pretty much you're just buying ammo from us. And okay, we're fine. letting you use it. Yeah, uh, but we have we have packages to kind of make it easy all the way from you know World War II all the yeah. way to kind of the modern warfare like Call of Duty for those that you know like video games. And, and what an experience that would be because if if you if you're not if you're not into guns per se, yeah, you but you're into history, mm -hmm. that what an amazing thing that you can actually fire a piece of history. Yeah. Or if you're not into guns per se, but you're into gaming, you can actually fire the games your favorite guns in the game. And that was the intent, you know. How like, amazing uh, is that? Not everybody yeah. knows every model up here and all the specs and all that, so we you kind of simplified to. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, we have. I mean, all the you know for the U.S. we have like the Thompson submachine guns, the grease guns. We have the German MG42. Yeah. Uh, as you get more modern, you know, we have the full uh, Heckler and Koch, uh, you know, HK series. Yes. Uh, so all the UMPs, MP5s, and then of course uh, you know FN, which is uh, Belgium. They're machine guns. Uh, I, rec I do recognize some of them from yeah. uh, Call of Duty. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we have some <laughs> of them on the table here, some around the range, but uh, bell fed machine guns where you lay you know, on your stomach and there's a big belt of ammo going yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we also have some uh, specialty ones too. So, we have a Colt uh, Bulldog, which is an old, uh, it's a big brass bodied Gatling gun. So, you can Oh, crank wow. It, like the old manual yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Amazing. we also have within the, uh, the range over here, which we'll walk past, is a, uh, a minigun. So, it's M134. Minigun, it'll shoot 6,000 rounds a minute. Well, so. I think we're gonna have a go on that okay, in a great. little bit, I yeah, hope. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that'll be fantastic. So where, where are we now? Uh, so yeah, this is an inside look at our armory. So wow. this isn't really customer facing, but it's a really cool piece to show you. Yeah. Uh, and really the uh, the breadth of the firearms that we actually have here. So, you know, one big thing here is if you're coming in to buy a handgun or, you know, you don't really know what you want, we have a wide selection that you can kind of try before you buy. That way, 
and you're not spending, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on something you really don't know if you want or not. Mm -hmm. And then the machine gun. So, you know, most of these on the, the bottom top racks are all kind of back of, of the machine gun. So, like I mean, that. This is a serious armor. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, this uh, looks yeah. like a, a small or a large police. It's like the Matrix. Or... He's like, I need yeah. guns. And it's all, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, and he just racks yeah, the yeah, guns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it's just kind of absurd to look at, but if you look like all these P90s, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. You most people would just, just I mean, love to have one, you know? Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we have multiples because, you know, more than one person comes in at a time to rent guns or if one goes down or we need backups, whatever it, it may so be. so frustrating to come all this way and then only to find out that your gun's sure. not ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. Or, 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 it happens right. all the time. I mean, you know, some of these are over 100 years old, so parts break. And things yeah, like I mean, they, these are Tommy guns, no? Yeah, so we have Tommy guns, uh, you know, back <laughs> dated as part of, you know, the 20s. Yeah. Um, the MG42, that German machine gun. Yeah. Um, you know, that thing's uh, very hard to get parts for. And some of these too, like even like the M60, you know, it's a... At this point, a, a 60 year old design, so. Yeah, yeah. So it's too loud to film in there, but we just walked through the workshop. Um, what, what are the guys doing in there? Is it just repairs or do you do modifications? Uh, yes. So okay. uh, we, uh, we offer services as simple as just cleaning, uh, you know, whether it's just uh, putting them in a bath, you know, cleaning everything from all the carbon and dirt up to serious machining. So, you know, for uh, handguns, it's really popular not to put optics on those like little red dot sites. Mm -hmm. So we can actually mill that out or barrels. Uh, we can thread barrels or, you know, build uh, precision rifles, lap them, all that stuff. So we yeah. can really do it all. Uh, really? A lot of these machine guns we've actually built ourselves here as well. So Wow. Oh, so uh, you're a one-stop shop. So someone could come to you and say, I love the handgun you've got there. You've got a massive selection, but I want this X, Y, and Z. Doing. And what about engraving and things? Is that something you could, you yeah, could do? Yeah, so, or? Um, you know, as we, we passed it already, but that big uh, blade bar, our knife section. Yes. Uh, we have a very robust engraver in there. So metal, wood, glass, whatever it may be, uh, we can engrave, you know, whether it's a serial number, you know, if you have your own. Uh, if you want it, your name or a logo, design, we can or... do anything. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. It's so good to know. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, uh, and and what's the sort of strangest request you've ever had? Have you, you, I guess oh, you get a lot of pink yeah. guns and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we get pink guns. Um, it's not as popular as you think. You know, no? most, most ladies want, uh, you know, they just want to be like anything else. You know, they just, how many ladies do you have? What's your customer base? So 46% uh, of our customers are actually female. Wow, okay. So it's a okay. very large part of our uh, audience, and that's only grown uh, firearm ownership and uh, uh, in general, has grown 25% with just females. I mean, it's uh, it's a big part of the market right now. So, That's you know, amazing. women are getting, uh, you know, firearms are getting trained, uh, and it's not just pink guns and, you no, know, no, no, no. purses. Yeah, it's, uh, oh. it's it's anything you or I would, uh, would handle. So, okay. um, some of the strangest things may mostly be people just don't know uh, that they can't own a machine gun or different things like that. So, they'll come in and want a rocket launcher on the bottom of the way. And it's like, right. yeah, yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, they come straight and they go, well, I'm Jim, I want to be James Bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want my car to fire rockets. And, and you've, you've actually got to talk them through. Correct. It's not a yeah. Because you were mentioning earlier, even suppressors, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you can't just buy a gun with a suppressor. Is that right? Yeah. So, the United States has some, uh, some interesting laws that uh, other you know, countries don't have around suppressors and barrel lengths. So, for us, if it's anything less than 16 inches uh, on a rifle barrel, uh, for us, it's considered a short barreled rifle, and therefore it needs extra paperwork, extra fees are involved, and a lengthy period of time to even get approved for that. So, if you were to buy a suppressor, which is regulated under that same uh, law for us, you know, you pay two hundred dollars. You have to go and fingerprint extra uh, fees and extra licensing and paperwork. And it takes about a year to actually get approved for that. So you actually wow. can't. You could buy it, yeah. but you can't take it home for about so, a year. So you've then presumably got loads of suppressors that customers are waiting to pick up. Yes. And it could be 12 months. Could be, yes. Wow. You know, at times could be shorter, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, but generally, up to, correct, up yeah. to 12 months. Yes. That's amazing. So it's not exactly like people think. You know, no, you, you just can't walk in and, you know, get armed to take on John Wick and, yeah, and then yeah. leave. You know, it's uh, there are some processes involved. Um, you know, when members you know, become a member here, uh, a safe rental is an option. So, you know, you get your own custom code that no one else knows. Um, and it's kind of interesting. So people use these for estates, you know, maybe someone passes and there's a lot of guns. And they don't know what to do with all those until, you know, whatever happens. So they'll store them here. Uh, there's, you know, this area too is kind of a high average income. So there are a lot of people that just have toys, you know, cars, yeah. whatever it may be. So they'll leave some of their just range guns here. Right. Uh, you know, or, I mean, even silly things, divorce, whatever, you know, people are hiding things, whatever. So, okay. Uh, so we kind of treat this as like a uh, security deposit, you know, or a, you know, a yeah. box. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you can personally uh, rent and, you know, you're the only one that has access to. So I don't think any ranges really have this. Most what of them just kind of service. just simple gym lockers. Yeah, yeah. Know, what a fantastic service because they're clearly very, very secure. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and, and, you know, you guys will be insured and all that. And then you've got to come through that very solid door you came through. And that you have the privacy that, that, that goes with the membership. So I think that's really, really fantastic yeah. service to offer. Just one little extra step that we took just to, you know, really 
kind of uh, make this a premier range. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's what a fantastic service. And I guess there's people with really expensive guns as well, and they sure. want to keep here rather than keep in their, in their residence. Amazing. It really is beautiful, isn't it? Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah, it is yeah. nice. Um, yeah. There's some uh, hidden spots back there where if you want to take a little snooze. No. <clears throat> no. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know if I have any of these other. So, yeah, these are, uh, <clears throat> not all of these are rented out, but uh, these are all custom built. So, as you move in, it's motion activated, you get LED lighting. But Amazing. Yeah, it's kind of nice. trigger until you're absolutely ready to fire, okay? This is what we're looking for. Keep your finger right here where the slide and the frame meet. Now the slide is the top portion of the pistol. Get the slide back and forth. The frame is the bottom portion. I mean, stationary the entire time of the shoot, okay? This is where you're looking to keep your finger until you're ready to go. Now from there, the second rule is you always treat every weapon as if it's loaded, which is why once we go over these, you're going to see that I actually block the slide to the rear, visually and visually and visually inspect the chamber to make sure she is clear. Um, number three, you never, ever want to point this thing at something I want to shoot to destroy. Okay? They're great tools to have fun with, but in the wrong hands, they can do a horrible, horrible amount of damage. And number four, this really doesn't apply to a secure because it's an indoor range, but you always want to know your target and what's beyond it. Okay? So if you guys are ever out shooting your shotguns and whatnot, you want to make sure you have this off backstop behind that target, got through those rounds you don't that's supposed to. Okay? Cool. Now we've got that out of the way. So let's go over a couple of, uh, well, really basically just one uh, roll for the range. When we're in here, keep the weapons pointed down range at all times. There's no reason any weapon needs to come close no. to back this way, okay? All right, so since we're all right-handed shooters, um, when it comes to holding the pistol, I've heard this called a bunch of names, dovetail, beaver tail, doesn't matter what you want to call it. What you want to think about is the webbing of your hand right here, you want the webbing as high in grip as possible. And the reason being, the higher the grip you have without the gun, the more control you're going to have. The more control you have, the more anchorage you have. That's what we're looking for, okay? Now, since I'm a left, uh, since I'm a right-handed shooter, my left hand, my support axe. You guys want to come around here so I can show you what I'm about to do? So, my left hand, I'm going to push it out like so, spread my fingers out. I'm going to angle my thumb towards parallel of the pavement. And the reason being, my thumb is actually going to go in line with the frame of the gun right here. All right? Now, when my left hand goes on that frame, my fingers on my, fingers on my support hand, they basically go right under the trigger guard, which is this portion right here. Now, it's called the trigger guard. It's, not, it's supposed to protect the trigger from being activated. It's not supposed to. Okay? Now, when it comes to actually presenting the weapon, you're going to push out with your shooting hand, pull back with support hand. The reason being, you're trying to set up a counterbalance. It's going to keep stable when you shoot. Okay? Now, there's stands. I'm all about shooter preference, but so it's going to be up to you guys what you feel comfortable doing. But I would recommend having you keep that at a good shoulder width distance, if not more, and your abdominal length back, maybe about six to eight inches, just like so. So, since I'm a right handed shooter, my right leg is my dominant leg. All right, back a little bit, leaning in, forward in the gun a little bit. Now, when it comes to standing with it, I would hold on to recommend leaning into her for a couple reasons. One, whenever, whenever you fire this weapon system, what happens? It uh, forces back. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a small explosion going off inside this barrel, and once that happens, it's going to be recoiling against you. So the more weight you put on this gun to, to fight that recoil, the less the recoil is going to affect you. Okay? Beyond that, um, you guys want to stand straight up and you shoot, that's fine, I feel free. But when you do so, you notice your arms have a much bigger range of motion if they did if you were just leaning forward. So because right here my arms can do all this right there, which is a no-go. Whereas if I'm leaning into the gun, your shoulders, your, your shoulder right here actually prevents your arms from going any higher than that. So leaning into the gun's gonna be your best bet, okay? Another thing that happens when folks want to stand up, after you're standing straight up for so long. Eventually, you might get tired and start leaning backwards. And when you lean back, what happens? It falls with it. The weapon system. That yeah. You don't want these yeah, yeah. there, right? Yeah. Keep the weapons pointed down range at all times. So, since we talked about that, let's talk about sideline really quick, okay? Now, I made a quick little teacher's tool over here. So, sideline. What that is, that's essentially lining up your sights like so. So, Whenever you guys focus through your sights, your focus is always going to be on that front side post. 
Now, when you look through them, you're going to notice there's going to be a space on the left and right hand side. Your mission is to keep that space as evenly spaced as possible, but equally critical, you want to keep the top of that front side post level with those rears, okay? So when you look through your sights, this is essentially what we're looking for. When that front dot is nice and centered, forgive my rough illustration, but you look for a nice clean line going across the top of your sights, equal spacing. Now, let's touch on sight picture. Now, the only difference between sight alignment and sight picture is you're basically superimposing that sight alignment on the target itself. You're going to put that front dot, remember, because that front dot's going where that round's going to go, mm -hmm. sends it right where you want it. So if you want to put it back quickly and fastly, that's in the face. Now you notice your sight, sight alignment's still the same. So this is what we're looking for with the sight picture. Mm -hmm. Okay? You basically, keep your sights aligned like so, put that front dot wherever you want that round to go, mm -hmm. and from there, slowly squeeze that trigger. Okay. okay? Now, before we get into shooting, I've suddenly developed a horrible case of amnesia. I've forgotten everything I've just said. So, can someone show me how to hold this gun? Now, keep it in mind, this gun is, is plastic. <laughs> yeah. It's not real at all, okay? Yeah. First things first. Right hand, looking for a nice high grip. A little bit, you might have put my hands up. Yeah, no, 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 Philippe. Bring your hands a little bit higher. Yeah. Now, switch spots with me. Come over to the right side. Now, your left hand, I'm going to move a couple things as well. Yeah, of course. So remember, you want your left thumb in line with the frame, just like so. Yeah. Now, this is one of the reasons why I love it. Well, one of the many reasons why I love and trust Glock is it makes it super easy to teach students how to hold the gun whenever I'm using one as an example. So, you feel some notch on that left hand yes. side? That's one of the takedown levers in the weapon system. So, I use it as an indicator where your fingers need to be when you're holding her. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, you always know you have that good positive grip each and every time, okay? Okay. So, now with your stance, remember, you want to push that right arm out. And then pull back with the left. We're looking to set up that counterbalance. It's going to help keep that gun steady, yeah. okay? Now, this left palm, essentially what you're looking to do, you're looking to cover this entire left portion of the grip with that palm. So you want your palms to connect just like so. Okay. Outstanding. Yeah. What you're looking to do, you're looking to th think of your hands as a basket weave. You're trying to make a nice little weave around that gun to keep her stable as possible. Mm -hmm. Looking good, okay? Now, remember, you want to lean into her, push that right arm all the way out, left arm bring her back. Now, you feel comfortable like this? Yes. Now, your stance, I would definitely recommend <laughs> widening your feet just a little bit. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now, you're, geez, you're a much taller man than I am. I, I feel like I'm short as hell right now. But <laughs> Sorry. Bring, that, bring her back up. Yep. You feel comfortable? Yes. Looks good. All right. Yep. Outstanding. When it comes to <laughs> shooting them, whenever they run out, this is what's going to happen. The slide's going to lock back to the rear. Now, when that happens, this is the button we're going to push. This is your magazine release. Push that in, magazine comes out, the weapon is still locked to the rear. Now, when it comes to loading these magazines, both these mags are a little different. This is a 2011 magazine, this, this one's like lock magazine, but it's with the same principle. All right, these are your feed lips right here. You're looking to put the back of the shelf right in front of the feed lips, push down, and then slide in, okay? Your feed lips essentially act like little pins because they're kind of shaped like so. So when you push that around under them, they hold them in place, okay? Now, it comes to loading your magazines, I'll do it for you so we can get you guys through the pistol portion and get you the full auto, the fun portion, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you. <clears throat> so, without any further ado, guys, let's get some ear protection, eye protection on. Let's have some fun. Back to the slide. Since you're all right handed shooters, I recommend using your thumb and your index. Grab it right here where the serrations are, pull it back nice and hard, and then let her slam forward. Okay. The reason being, people want to do this, and it's okay, but a couple things can go wrong. One, um, when people don't want, don't let the slide go back go back forceful like it's supposed to, it doesn't always, uh, the round itself doesn't always go to the feed ramp and load inside the chamber, so it's going to be a little rough with her. Second reason why, now on, on our hands, we got this stuff called skin and flesh. <laughs> so when it gets stuck in a chamber, it's not exactly painful. Yeah, it's like hell. It's a little yeah. painful, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's real simple. Just insert the magazine, grab the slide from the rear, pull it back nice and hard, let it slam forward, and that's it. Okay. okay? All right. So are we ready? Yep. Thank you. So we got the Staccato here, and with a Glock 34 Combat Master made famous John Wick 2. Okay. Hey guys, please pick your poison. Outstanding. All right, but let's go ahead and get those feet spread shoulder width apart. Both feet facing toward the target. Yeah. There we go. All right, brother. Now remember, get that left thumb on the frame, bud. Put the right thumb on top. Outstanding. That's Whatever it. Yeah. Ready, sir. Keep it up, you're doing very well.
insert your magazine. Outstanding. Go ahead and pull that slide over here. First time forward. Too easy. Have at it, bud. You're doing very well. Thank you. Second click, it's full auto. Full right, 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 dump everything in the magazine, okay? Right. Now, you keep her nice, tight, and short. Left hand to go out here the floor with the gun. Now, it's going to be somewhat similar to the way you shoot when you're, when you're shooting a pistol, but rather than this, you're really going to lean into her because, especially with the MP5, she had a lot of muscle rise. Recoil isn't terrible, but when you're shooting, when you're shooting full okay, auto, well, she's going to So, it's imperative to lean into her, okay? okay? All right. So, we've got right, eight so tickets, all right? On three, you go. So who's first? So, whenever you're ready, go ahead and uh, flick your safe selector from safe to semi. Give me a couple rounds of semi-automatic, so that way you can get a feel for it. Okay. And then once you feel like you're ready, we'll go into full auto, we'll dump the bag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ready, bud? Yeah. Whenever you're ready. Another one? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right answer. That's good, yeah. Thank you. Go ahead and put it in full auto. Sorry? Go ahead and put it in full Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Safety? Yeah, safety's on the right hand side. So remember, when you click her all the way down, it's gonna be on full auto. When okay, so. That, it's gonna be semi. So one, there we go. So this is? That's semi right there. If she gets in there, there we go. There we go, okay. This is why we hate AKs in the US. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> She's a big old broad. <laughs> All right. Try that. <laughs> yeah. Who's first? Nice, nice job, guys. Thank you. Did you guys have fun? Yeah, amazing. You thank you, buddy. Bit? Brilliant. Thank you. Did you have a good experience in Texas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course we did, yeah. All right, guys. Well, appreciate y'all coming out. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. The green light means you're ready to rock and roll. Here's your triggers, okay? Mm -hmm. You can push one or both. It doesn't matter. Just as long as you push down the whole way through, okay? Makes no difference. No difference. Okay. Um, is there a laser sight or no? Uh, no, there's no uh, laser sight on there. It's not working, but we've already got it all situated. So all you do is just gotta hold on to it. So there's no aim, no. No aim. No. She's gonna, Fixed. It's just gonna vibrate really. really okay. Rapidly. Okay. Cool. Okay. When you're ready, yeah.
That's it. <laughs> you can feel it through your core, through your skeleton and everything. You can feel every part of your body shaking. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. You can feel every part of your body moving. Wow, what an incredible experience. Thank you so much Absolutely. again for, for everything. Just on the minigun there, I've got a couple of questions. Is it, is it a real, because I mean, it's just so mental. Is it a real application? Is it re used in real life anyway? Absolutely, again, that's not anything that you or I would ever own, but no. uh, you know, our current armed forces use that. They use it on the side of like attack helicopters, armored vehicle, in fact, our secret service that protect the President of the United States, uh, typically they have one of those in a black unmarked SUV that pops out of the top, so. Wow. Yes, that can Wow, so that to, pops out of the top and just, I mean, just obliterates yes. anything. Yes, it's 6,000 rounds a minute, so that's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty 6, phenomenal. 6,000 rounds a minute, that's absolutely incredible. And, and like, you, you, I think you, was, yeah, you said earlier, uh, it's accuracy by volume. Yes, correct. What an incredible yeah, yeah. saying. Yes. That's so funny. Again, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely, I really pleasure coming it. in, and I oh. hope you enjoyed your Texas gun experience. We really did, yeah, yeah, we really awesome. did, thank you.